In the June Board of Directors meeting, we added two new CentOS directors, and I have the pleasure to be speaking with one of them today. This is Davide Cavalca, who is our newest director. Thanks for making time to talk to me. Thanks for having me. Let's start with this question. Why do you want to be, why did you agree to be a CentOS director? What do you hope to accomplish in this position? So I started using CentOS around 2012. Um, I've been involved with open source before, but I didn't really use CentOS before that. And it has been really interesting for me to see throughout the years how the project has changed and how it's become more open to community contributions. And especially with the recent change of stream, it really feels like the project is just a bit of a pivotal moment where it's moving from something that was effectively just a rebuild of what came out of Red Hat, but there wasn't really an easy way to contribute back, maybe unless unless you wanted to go through Fedora, but that took a while and was a very indirect way, or unless you were a Red Hat customers and you want to leverage that business relationship. Now we stream, people have the opportunity to actually do work on CentOS directly and send PRs and do and do work there. And I think that's a really that's a really exciting time. Because it, it gives people the opportunity not only to use an enterprise trade distribution, but also to do work on it and make it better. So, and I think the board here has a really good chance to try and steer this process and steer the community in a good direction. Uh, I think there's a lot of things within CentOS that mostly because of artifacts of history are kind of hidden and difficult to understand. The, the core group of developers is relatively small. Uh, and the core group of the infra, or the people managing the infra is relatively small. So a lot of the knowledge there isn't sometimes terribly well documented. And it can appear mysterious coming from the outside. So I think we have a really great opportunity now to try and dispel some of these things and make it easier for folks from the community to join in, not just with code contribution, but assisting with infra, assisting with all kinds of other work that they might be interested in. So in your answer, you, you touched a little bit on the next question that I was going to ask. but. Are, are there other changes in, in community structure or governance that, that you would like to see happen during your tenure? I think encouraging, having a way to encourage type by contributions would be great. I think right now the project is at a stage where if you want to be invested in CentOS, you can, you can definitely make a difference. You can found a SIG, you can join a SIG, you can do work within that space, but that is a commitment. Uh, there isn't really a way for someone that uses CentOS, finds a bug in a package, decides they want to fix it, to get it in production quickly. Like that, right now, the process is that they file a bug on Bugzilla, they can attach a patch to the bug, but there isn't really a there isn't really a nice workflow for that. Like I would love to have something like a GitHub style PR workflow where people could like fork a package, make a PR, and that also. That makes it a lot easier for people because it's a workflow they're familiar with. It also something that makes it easier to make it clear what the attribution of the change is here. And I think for especially for smaller community contributions, it's important for them to be credited appropriately whenever they make changes in these things. So I think that would make it more easy and more valuable for them. And in general, like my experience has been in other open source projects that small contributors sometimes grow to become large contributors. Mm -hmm. And these kind of things can be gateway, gateway changes that then get people more involved in the community. One of the policies around board of director members is that they act as individuals, not as a representative or spokesperson of their company. How do you envision keeping your, your personal priorities and work priorities separate? I'm not expecting that to be much of an issue, to be honest. Like I work for Facebook. I don't think that's a secret. I've spoken at conferences on Facebook's behalf with a Facebook t-shirt. Uh, it's also no secret that Facebook uses CentOS and is deeply invested in the CentOS ecosystem. And that a lot of the work that I am doing within the hyperscale SIG is work that is useful at Facebook and is sometimes draw, is, is driven by work that we want to see happening from Facebook. Um, that's on the technical side of things. I think a lot of the things that the board works on are more on the governance side. Mm -hmm. um, like speaking with my Facebook hat on, I don't think Facebook has any interest or will to influence the project in that sense. Like, I think Facebook is perfectly happy to have the project continue the way it sees fit, but I would like the project to get better, <laughs> like, <laughs> frankly, and I think there's an opportunity there. And like, I'm sure there will be some areas of like where this gets slightly weird, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to figure it out. I don't think the project is a stranger to these kind of issues. Like mm -hmm. half of the board is Red Hat employees. 
other people have other employers that also have stakes in CentOS. Like I think it's a fairly common thing to have to deal with with a project like CentOS. So I'm not terribly worried about it. Do you see the board's role as primarily activist to provide active leadership, or are they there simply to react to uh, the the community and and uh, the surrounding technological landscape? I think it will really depend on the specific areas. I think in some areas, the board should be the one leading. I think in others, it should be left to the community. I think for technical matters, in general, it should be up to the community, and the board should try to enable work that the community wants to do and try to remove roadblocks. Um, but I think in terms of project governance, for example, the board is kind of the, the one body that is responsible for that. So I think that is absolutely something that's in the board responsibility and also ensuring that the board can function properly, that the project can function properly, monitoring the project health, making sure that the project is accessible to everybody, that people can contribute without having to jump through hoops, uh, dealing with things like code of conduct enforcement. I think all of that are things that are very reasonable for the board to take the lead on. But this is also something I would want to see what the community wants to get out of the board. If I think it's perfectly reasonable for the board to take on technical leadership if it's requested to do so in specific areas, or if there's no interest from the community in taking leadership in those areas, but we see a need for it. Well, thank you very much for letting us know your thoughts, and I look forward to working with you in the coming year or years. Thank you. I do as well.